So in this section, we're going to talk about cell potential when we're not running under standard state conditions. So if you go and change the concentration from these standard concentrations of one molar solutions, then the cell potential will change. And we're going to see how that will happen and, um, in this section. It's called the the Nernst equation. Okay, so this is what I've basically told you already. Um, we calculated standard cell potential. We use this to um, uh, calculate standard delta G and equilibrium constant. Well, we know in the thermodynamic chapter that there was a change to our delta G with our um, change in concentration. We had an equation for that, and we know that the delta G is equal to um, the non-standard cell potential, so if changing the concentration affects the value of delta G, then certainly changing the concentration will affect the value of E. Now, um, and that's what this is saying. So here is the relationship. If you will think back to the delta G equation that got us between standard delta G and non-delta G, there was a term we added in there, but we added that term. Because the relationship between these are opposite sign, we change our cell potential with a minus sign in there, okay? So this right here is the Nernst equation. You say, here is it, the value of E under standard state conditions, that's the one with the little circle, and if we subtract this term away, it will change the value. And we know what Q is, right? Q is going to be the products over the reactants raised to the power of their coefficients, whatever those coefficients would be. But where we are right now, okay, at the start, we'll say, not at equilibrium. So you're saying, here's the set of conditions where I am now. I can make this ratio, which affects that right-hand term. Now, this equation comes in a lot of different shapes and sizes. It's really the same equation, and you can use it as you see it right here. I want you to be aware that very often, um, and there it is repeated, very often we run these cells under 25 degrees Celsius. And if um, R is a constant, and Faraday, the F is a constant, and it's running almost typically at 25 degrees Celsius, or 298 Kelvin, then you'll see this equation very often written, and I will use it very often this way because I happen to have that value stuck in my head. Now, the R is on the periodic table you have when you take our exams. The Faraday's constant will be there as well, so you don't have to memorize those. But if you don't want to have to plug those in every time, here is the equation with the R, T, and the F already included. And that's the one that I will use typically, um, and because they're almost always at 25 when we're doing our problems. But if they weren't, you'd have to go back up to that top equation. Now, I mentioned this next equation not because uh, you need to memorize it, okay? I mentioned this next equation because you might be searching the web and watching some videos about this equation, and they might pull it out and have it look like this. Or you might be looking through an old textbook and see it with a log instead. There is a relationship between natural log and log. There's a constant that gets us between those two. In this day and age of calculators, I cannot imagine why the bottom one is better than the, the middle one that you see there. Um, but I think in the age of slide rules, maybe a log base 10 was easier to do on slide rules, so they would make this manipulation. I see no point in it, but I wanted to show it to you in case you saw it and said, well, Dr. Woodrum was wrong. It's not that equation. It's the, you know, and, and get thrown off by it. Okay, so let us start. Um, we're going to start by having you answer a question, and then we'll finish this one together. I gave you a reaction up at the top, okay, and I want you, and I gave you the values for the standard cell potentials, okay, down at the bottom. I want you to calculate the cell potential for the reaction that you see up there if it was under standard state conditions, okay? So we're gonna eventually do what you see in blue. What you're gonna do is calculate the standard cell potential given those values there. Well, hopefully you picked a positive 0 0.05. Let's see if I have a check mark there. Oh, I don't have a check mark there. A positive 0 0.05. Now, how is this different? These are the same half reactions that I gave in our previous lesson where we were calculating standard cell potential, standard delta G, and K. But this reaction up at the top is reversed. 
So we would use these same two half reactions, but you'll notice on this one up there at the top, the cobalt is as a solid is on the left-hand side. So I'm flopping that first equation. I'm taking the 0 0.28 and making it positive because it's the reverse. And then I am adding to that a negative 0 0.23 volts, and that is where I'm getting the positive. Okay, so this is the standard because you're using those standard half cell potentials. So now we're going to finish the problem together. We're going to use the Nernst equation. The Nernst equation says that the cell potential when it's not in standard state conditions is equal to the cell potential when it is in standard state conditions minus, and here you have a couple choices. I will use, since it tells me, is it, does it tell me? Well, it doesn't. <laughs> so here's a point. If you run across a problem and they don't tell you a temperature, you are to assume it's running under um, room temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. Okay? I should have had that written in there. 0 0.0257 volts over the number of electrons transferred. When I look at that real oh, Sorry, I'm just going to write it out as we see it. And then the natural log of Q. Okay, I haven't plugged anything in there. So now let's plug values in. We have our standard E that we just determined, 0.05 volts. Okay. We have 0.0257 volts over the number of electrons transferred. And cobalt, you just watch one half reaction across, you'll see what the number of electrons transferred are. And that's two moles of electrons. Okay. And then we have got, and this is actually, um, no, that's correct. We have, should be volts per mole. That way the moles are canceling. And then we have the natural log of Q. So I'm going to write, I look up at that top reaction and I do products and you don't include solids, right? Or liquids. So it's cobalt's value, that's products, raised to the first power over nickel, Okay, and that's a 2 plus as well. So cobalt, it tells me what its concentration is. Its concentration is standard, so it's 1 molar. But nickel's concentration is 0.1. Okay, so now I have all the values I need to plug in and obtain an E for this cell. The value for the E for this cell is 0. 0, 0.02 volts. It went down in voltage. So what we want to do is wonder if does that make sense. If we look at our reaction, okay, if it were standard state, and I'm going to rewrite it here so I can point to it, cobalt solid plus nickel 2 plus, any ion is going to be aqueous, it's not written that way up there, and then we have cobalt 2 plus plus nickel solid, okay. If this were under standard state conditions, we would end up with this voltage. And it's running at a certain clip spontaneously to the right. What have we done here? We have dropped the concentration of this. We have taken this out. So it is going to shift its equilibrium as it goes this way. And it's not going to run with quite as much abandon to, towards the product side. So whenever you take out a reactant, you're going to drop the voltage. And you could drop the voltage so much that it ends up not being spontaneous in the forward direction. If we increase this, okay, if we add some of this, more of this, that also decreases the voltage. What are some things that I could do to increase the voltage? Well, I could make my cobalt concentration less or my nickel concentration more. If I make this less, it's like pulling it out. It tries to bring it up, so it pushes it to the right more. So those are the things that we can do to affect the voltage. If we increase them both by the same magnitude, they were one and one, and then we go two and two. It doesn't change this ratio, so it doesn't affect the voltage. But if you bring one up and one down, you can manipulate what voltage you have. Okay. Here we have a reaction in which on the left-hand side we have nickel, two plus, and nickel solid. And on the right-hand side we have nickel, two plus, and nickel solid. So at first glance it says, there's nothing happening here. 
The nickel solids can cancel out, but look at the nickel 2 plus. They're at different concentrations, okay? So when you have two half cells, you connect them with your salt bridge, and, and they're exactly the same half cells, except their concentrations are different, that redox reaction will occur. The thing that's at a lower concentration is going to try to come up, and the thing at the higher concentration is going to go down as they try to get to an equilibrium where they're the same and get to a zero voltage. So there is a, this is called a concentration cell. It's just a change in the concentration driving it. Okay? And we can do calculations for this. When you set up this equation, what would E of the standard E be? Well, the standard E would be, well, the forward reaction and the inverse reaction would have exactly the same half cell potential, but they'd be opposite in sign. So the standard E in a concentration cell is always zero. And then you can go in and plug in the values for the nickel product, which in this case would be 0.1 molar, and the nickel 2 plus uh, on the reactant side, which is 1 molar, and you would obtain a value for this. We're going to do this concentration cell instead of the other one and get numbers for it because it's a little bit more complicated to do. So we have a problem here in which we see the same half cells on both sides. It is the hydrogen um, half cell. One of them is under standard state conditions, the one on the right, and one of them is not under standard state conditions. In this problem, they're asking us to calculate the pH. Now, if I could determine the concentration of H+, plus, I can determine the pH. So that is what we need. So we are going to uh, write the Nernst equation. E equals E standard minus, does it say it's 25 degrees Celsius? No, but once again, if they don't give you a temperature, you're going to assume that value. 0 0.0257 volts over the number of electrons transferred, and then the natural log of Q. Okay? So now what do we know? If it's a concentration cell, this is zero. Okay? Zero volts for that. They tell me in the problem, and when they hook this up, that the non-standard voltage was 0 0.108. Okay? And that's volts. So that's what we know so far minus 0 0.0257 volts over um, how many electrons transferred. Well, we don't know that until we write some reactions. Natural log of Q, and we don't know what to plug in there. These two things we can't know until we have reactions. And what you see up there is not a reaction yet. It is a half cell, I mean, it's a uh, cell diagram, right? It's our voltaic cell with hydrogen electrodes on both sides. So what we have to do is, before we can plug in a Q or an N, we need to write the reactions that we see there. So we're going to look up there at that half cell, and remember that on the left side is the anode, and oxidation occurs at the anode. So I'm going to write this as an oxidation. Loss of electrons is oxidation. So the hydrogen, I'm going to write them down here where I've got a little, little room, the hydrogen, and I'll write it as a gas, and I'm going to carry this information right along. It's at one atmosphere, okay, is turning into hydrogen, the ion, okay, aqueous, and it is on the, this half reaction, I don't know, question mark, molarity, okay, plus, well, how many electrons does it take to get to that? two electrons, okay? I have to lose two electrons. So this is what's happening at the anode. At the cathode, cathode is reduction. Reduction is the gaining of um, electrons. It's the same half reaction, but it's going to be written this way. Two electrons are going to be added to the hydrogen ion, which is aqueous, and we know its concentration, in this case, it's under standard state conditions. It's one molar. And that is becoming the hydrogen gas. And what do we know about the hydrogen gas? In this situation, on the right-hand side, it is also at one atmosphere. Okay? So those are the two half reactions. This is what's happening at the cathode. 
So if we looked at the overall reaction, we can know the number of electrons transferred before we even look at the overall reaction. There's two moles of electrons transferred, right? But when we add these two half reactions together, what can cancel? Anything that looks exactly the same on both sides can cancel. Two electrons cancels with two electrons. And notice how the hydrogen gas is at exactly the same set of conditions. So they can cancel as well. If you didn't cancel them, it would turn out okay, just fine in our queue. But since they're the same, we can cancel them. That gives me hydrogen aqueous at one molar turning into, actually, should have been a two there, my apologies. Two hydrogens aqueous at one molar going to two hydrogens aqueous at, I don't know its molarity, that's my unknown. Now you might be tempted at this point to reduce this down to one. And you could do that, but if you, trans if you drop this down to one, the two electrons transfer would no longer apply. So don't mess with this because we've already established two electrons were transferring. Now we're ready to get natural log of Q. It would be products, which is my hydrogen concentration squared on the product side, okay? Let me write that product over the hydrogen ion concentration squared on the reactant side. So we can put numbers in for that at this point. What do we have? And I'm going to go ahead, I'll bring that zero over. Oh, there's nothing there. So 0 0.108 volts is equal to a negative, and let's see if I actually got a value for that. No, I never bothered um, divvying that one out. Okay, divided by two, natural log of, what is it on the product side? I don't know. And so I'm going to call it x squared. What is it on the reactant side? I do know it was one molar. Well, x squared divided by one, let's just write it as x squared, okay? This was one molar and one squared is going to be one. So now I can bring this to this side by dividing by 0.0257 and multiplying by two. 0 0.108 times two divided by, make my pen work a little bit better here, divided by um, a negative 0 0.0257, and that's going to equal the natural log of x squared. When you do the division and multiplication and division of this portion right here, you get negative 8.405 and negative 8.405, and that's going to be equal to the natural log of x squared. Next thing that we need to do is get rid of the natural log, so we take e to both sides. Okay, once we take e to both sides, that's going to leave me with x squared, and x squared is equal to 2.2 times 10 to the minus 4. Okay, so we have a, a small number. We want just x, so we take the square root of both sides and we get x. And the value for x is 0 0.01, 0 0.015, um, okay, to two significant figures. Now what is x? x was the unknown concentration of hydrogen. All right, but what did they want to know? They wanted to know the pH. So this is the H plus concentration. When we know the H plus concentration, how do we get the pH? Well, pH is going to be the negative log of that number, 0 0.015. And the pH is, therefore, the value of 1.83, okay? So that's how you work a concentration cell. And what I really want to stress before we leave this problem is this process right here. Students will try to work this problem and not do this. And if you don't do this, you don't have a cue. You don't have your things in the right place. I see students who will look at that and see that the um, one molar is on the right side. And so they'll put the one molar on the top and they'll see that the unknown is on the left side and they'll put that on the bottom, thinking that that would be the order that they're in. But you must write the half reactions, do the overall reaction before you know which one is the product and you know which one's the reactant. 
All right, I think I have one more here. Because, and, and because it's the most challenging to come from a cell diagram to the um, getting the right cue, I wanted to do another example of this one. So let's see here. We're going to determine the um, concentration of silver. And they've given me a cell diagram, and I don't know the concentration of silver. So let us start by um, writing our Nernst equation. E standard minus 0 0.0. Did they actually say 25? Oh, I actually told you 25 this time. 0 0.0257 over n natural log of q. Now for both n and q, we know we need chemical reactions. So we're going to write our chemical reactions for those, that cell diagram. On the left hand side is the anode. Anode is oxidation. Loss of electrons is oxidation. So we've got to write a half reaction where we're losing electrons. So we've got the iron, 2 plus, and I want to tell you that it's aqueous and the concentration is 0 0.125. So we see that it's not standard state conditions. Loss of electrons, it's turning into iron 3 plus, aqueous. Okay, and this aqueous, uh, do we know its concentration? 0 0.068 plus an electron. Okay, so there's the half cell on the anode side. On the right hand side is the cathode. The cathode is reduction and reduction is a gain of electrons. So we're starting with silver aqueous where I don't know its concentration so I'm going to call it X. Okay, It is gaining that electron and turning into silver solid. Okay, So you'll want to make sure you've written these in the correct order. Anode, oxidation, loss of electrons cathode reduction, gain of electrode, electrons, same number of electrons gained and lost in this case, that's, that's handy. If it weren't, we'd have to multiply one of them through. When we add these guys together, the electrons will cancel, and in this case, that's all that we can cancel. So the overall reaction is iron 2 plus aqueous 0.125 molar plus silver plus aqueous, I don't know its concentration, turning into iron 3 plus aqueous 0 0.068 molar plus silver solid. That's my overall reaction. At this point then I can know the number of electrons transferred. That's going to be 1. And I know what the Q expression at least looks like, right? Q would be products. So it would be iron's concentration with a 3 plus charge over the iron concentration with a 2 plus charge and the silver concentration that is my unknown. Okay, don't know it. So now let's take the values and plug them in. They tell me that the cell potential is E of 0 0.015 volts. What I don't know yet is what the standard is. So let's go down to that, the little table there in the middle. It tells me what the reduction potentials are. This one is on there, but it's the reverse of what I see here. So I'm going to change the sign to a negative 0.77 volts. This is exactly as I see it, so it's a positive 0.80 volts. And that is going to give me a cell potential E standard for the whole reaction, if it were under standard state conditions, of 0 0.03 volts. Okay, it's positive, 0.03 volts. Now it's 0.03 volts, we want to know what the concentration of silver is going to be to bring the voltage to 0 0.015 instead. So we'll put in our standard cell potential of 0 0.03 volts minus 0 0.0257 over Number of electrons transferred is 1. All right, so that is, um, what is it, volts per mole and mole. Those are canceling. Been sloppy with that quite often. Natural log of Q. All right, so let's plug our numbers in. It would be on the top would be 0 
068. On the bottom, we would have, what is it? Here it is, 0.125, okay? And then my unknown that I'm solving for, which I'll call x. So I'll bring this over to this side. That's going to be a negative 0 0.015. Okay, is equal to a negative 0 0.0257. Natural log, okay, and when I divide those two numbers together, I have 0 0.544. But the x is in the denominator. Okay, now I will divide both sides by the negative 0 0.0257. And that will leave me with the natural log of 0 0.544 over x. And that is equal to, when I divide these numbers, let's see if I have that somewhere in my magic area here. I have 0.584. It's a positive number. Okay, now I have to get rid of my natural log, so I take e to both sides. Okay, e to this number, e to this number makes that go away. That's going to leave me with 0 0.544 over x is equal to e to 0.584. e to 0.584 is 1.79. So x i got to get it up to the top, so I'm going to multiply both sides by x and get it over here, and then I'm going to get my 1.79 below, so it's 0.544 divided by 1.79, and that is going to give me an x of 0 0.303, and that's a concentration, so it's in molarity. Um, can you all read that very well? Let's see if I can clean it up a little bit. 0 0.303. And it's a concentration, so it's molarity. All right, so again, key to using this equation, you need a Q. Can't get a Q without a reaction. So you have to take the time to write that reaction out, and then you can plug everything in and solve for your variable. All right, so we've done a lot of voltaic cells where you hook up these and let them run spontaneously and get a voltage. We learned how to calculate those. We're ready to go to electrolysis next. Electrolysis is forcing these reactions to go in the opposite direction by pumping electricity into. So they're not getting electricity out, you're pumping it in.